I'm Nathan Labrasser. I'm an associate professor of physical medicine and rehabilitation and an assistant professor of physiology and biomedical engineering. Uh, I partnered with Sandeep Kosla, who's another member of the Robert and Arlene Kogod Center on Aging at Mayo Clinic. And he's really one of the world's uh, premier experts on, on bone health. And my background is really in understanding skeletal muscle aging. So uh, Dr. Kosla and I partnered to look at how muscle mass and different measurements of bone health change across lifespan uh, and whether some of these are highly uh, coordinated and related. It's interesting to think about how muscle and bone really develop from similar cells uh, during development. And then as we age, uh, we seem to achieve peak skeletal muscle mass and bone health at the same time, so around 30 to 40 years of age. And then we have this progressive decline that occurs um, as we get older. So we're really interested in understanding how muscle and bone uh, age in parallel. We use a number of new imaging techniques to capture um, the health of the musculoskeletal system. And what we found and what we did is we use a, a technique called dual x-ray energy, uh, dual energy x-ray absorptiometry to measure muscle mass. And when we normalize muscle mass to height, so kind of determining the relative amount of muscle mass your body has, and we looked at how well it correlated with a number of measures of bone health, not just bone mineral density, which is most commonly you looked at, but very precise measures of bone health, meaning the cortical bone or the outer covering of your bone, looking at how dense it is and how strong it is, as well as the, the spongy bone that you have, the trabecular bone, to see how well that, um, to see how healthy that part of your bone is. We saw that there was really nice correlations between muscle mass and different measurements of bone health and strength. And what that suggests is that even if we adjust for age and physical activity levels, and those relationships still persist, that there's some um, clear relationship in terms of how muscle and bone health are regulated throughout lifespan. So we went to look a little bit farther, um, further into this story and looked at how certain circulating parameters, so things in your circulation that might help predict bone health and muscle mass are related. And we found that a number of factors um, are similarly uh, affecting bone and health at the same time. There were some differences. It seems that um, some of the relationships are a bit stronger in women and part of this could relate to what we already know and that's the fact that men tend to have a little bit higher muscle mass throughout lifespan. They achieve uh, higher muscle mass relative to their height earlier in life and then as they get older they maintain this relatively higher skeletal muscle mass. So what this might, might indicate because some of the relationships are stronger in women is that women may dip below a critical threshold of muscle mass that may then predispose them to risk for low bone or poor bone health. And this may be one of the reasons why women are at particular risk for fall-related fractures in their hips as well as in, in their wrists. And um, different types of bone can be differentially affected in women and make them more at risk. So the question really as asked is if you had an intervention that increased muscle mass in the women and they got beyond a potential, you know, this, this, this theoretical threshold, would they, would they then be protected from age-related bone changes leading to osteoporosis? and would they be protected from fall-related fractures. It really doesn't matter if I'm talking about um, skeletal muscle health or maintaining physical function in later life, but we're, we're big fans of the powers of exercise. And we think that as we age, the loss in muscle and the loss in bone and the correlated or the associated decrease in physical function really kind of forms this detrimental synergistic triad that makes, it, makes us particularly at risk for falls, fall-related fractures, and then the, the negative sequelae that follow that. And, and that includes things such as hospitalization and even death. And um, interventions such as physical activity, even in later life, are really powerful mediators of both bone health and muscle health and uh, are a smart way to go about improving um, the integrity of both systems.